Hi, my name is James Shepard with North and uh, today I'd like to give you some tips on how to sell big deals. Now let me tell you what I mean by a big deal. Um, a big deal would be a merchant uh, that does over $100,000 a month in credit card processing. Um, and again, this is just my definition. Um, they do over $100,000 a month in credit card processing at one location um, and or preferably um, they have more than they have five or more locations where they do business. So one of those two, uh, or preferably both, if they do you know more than five locations, doing more than hundred thousand dollars per location, you hit the jackpot. Um, I want to give you some tips on how to do that. Now, the list of prospects and realize that this is a fixed universe. Now, um, let me explain what I mean by that. Um, when you make a list, now I'm not going to tell you how to make your list. You're going to have to go about doing that. Reference USA is a good uh, free resource, referenceusa.com. Um, but uh, what you need to do is you need to make a list of businesses okay, that do over $2.5 million a year in processing volume. And you also need to make a list of businesses in your local area. Um, where they have multiple locations, five or more locations. Now, you're going to have to do a little research on that. You see a business and you go, hey, there's another one of those businesses. I didn't know they had multiple locations. Go on Google Maps and search for it and find out if they, how many they have. So you're going to have to create that list. And then you're going to have to realize that that list is a, is a closed universe, a fixed universe. You only have those people to work with in your area. So don't uh, waste that list. Well, in other words, when you go into a merchant's location, under normal circumstances, you're trying to get a regular sale. You kind of want to find out if they want to buy it, and then if they don't, then you want to get out, and you don't want to waste your time. These accounts are totally different than that. You have to work them slowly and deliberately, but you work that list as if those are the only businesses that you can sell. So you don't want to make anybody upset. Uh, you don't want to annoy anyone. Um, you want to be extremely professional and you want to work the list strategically and consistently. And I'm going to talk about that as well in a minute. Um, but create your list. So first you got to have a list. I would advise that you try to make a list of at least 30 businesses in your area that you want to target. Again, that means uh, they're doing a large amount of revenue. Now it's difficult to build that list because um, also businesses are going to come up like Walmart, Walgreens. You're not going to service those right now. Okay, So don't, don't try to go after Walmart and Walgreens. Um, that doesn't mean you can't go after a business that large. It just means those businesses are branded and so they're corporately branded. So in order to sell one Walmart, you've got to sell all the Walmarts. In order to sell one Walgreens, you've got to sell all the Walgreens. Okay, That's a little bit of a tall order. And so you don't want to go quite that far with it. You're just looking for local, regional businesses that do a lot of business and you want to make a list of those businesses and realize it's a fixed universe. That's all you got to work with. Okay, next, number three. Uh, when you do the pitch, the initial opening pitch is just like this. This is high pitch. Okay, you call somebody up, call their corporate office, and I just say, "Hi, my name is James Shepard. We are uh, one of the largest processors in the United States for uh, credit card processing, and uh, we have access to really good pricing. I just want to find out how do I get involved in the bidding process for your credit card processing." And then you stop talking. Just ask that question. How do I get involved in the bidding process uh, for your credit card processing? To be your credit card processing vendor is another line you can use. And you just simply ask that question. They will explain to you how the bidding process works. Now, in most of these large companies, you have to understand, you're not going to just go in there and get a sale. It doesn't work like that. Normally, they take bids once every year or every two years even. Okay, Sometimes twice or even three times a year they'll accept bids from vendors. You have to get your foot in the door by finding out when they want to accept bids. And I'm going to tell you, don't waste your time. If they say we accept bids in August, then call them a little bit before they start to accept bids and get your bid in there. Okay, Don't try to be the pushy person that goes in and tries to get, oh, I'm going to sell them in June. No, you're not. You're going to sell them in August because that's when they accept bids. Again, we're talking about large accounts here. Okay, it's totally different. So uh, find out when they accept bids, and then go in there and, and give them a bid. Okay, next, um, talk to anyone. Um, this again goes totally in the face of your small businesses. In small business, what do you do? And you want to talk to the business owner. You don't want to waste your time with somebody that can't make the decision. All right, totally different. When you're dealing with a big account, talk to anybody, pitch anybody. In other words, when you get somebody on the phone. Talk to them about it. Treat them like a human being because most of the time you're talking to an executive that has a big ego and if you treat him like, well, I can't talk to you, you can't make the decision, 
uh, you have just totally ruined your chances because they're going to make that decision collectively and they're going to make it in a group meeting and you want everybody in that meeting that spoke to you to say, man, this guy was professional, he was great. So what I do is I try to just educate people as I talk to them. I might say, well, you're probably already on Interchange Plus pricing. Um, because we have a special relationship with First Data and Global, we're able to offer much lower transaction fees, uh, much lower than what you would normally see, and our cost structure is basically just lower, and we're able to offer a lot better deals. So I just want to get in on your bidding process. That's really all, and, and I'm, I know you guys are going to make the best decision for your business, and that's all I want you to do. I'm just trying to get my foot in the door and get my bid in with everybody else's, and I know that mine's going to come to the top just because I'm going to offer you a better price than anybody else. And uh, so you want to do that, but you want to talk to anybody. If you get somebody on the phone, talk to them. If they're willing to talk to you about it, talk to them about it. Um, or they might say, no, you know what, let me get you off to so-and-so. When you get to them, talk to them about it, okay? So talk to anybody. Next, do what they want or ask you to do, okay? I know that sounds really simple, but you got to do what they ask you to do, okay? If they say, uh, well, I tell you what, the boss is going to be back next Thursday. Can you give them a call next Thursday? Guess what you need to do? Give the boss a call next Thursday, all right? Don't call him on Monday and say, hey, I didn't know if he got back in yet. I just wanted to check in. Or you stop in there and say, hey, I just wanted to stop in. You're wasting your time. Do what they ask you to do, and you'll get so much farther along with these big accounts, okay? Just do what they want you to do. If they say, hey, I'm going to give you one statement from two years ago on one of our 50 locations, can you give me a cost comparison? Yes, I can do that for you. Even though you want to say, come on, you know, I need to see a current processing statement. I need to see something. Don't do that. Say, absolutely. Man, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to do that for you. I'd be happy to. Do what they want you to do and what they ask you to do. Okay, next. Be realistic with timetables and costs. Okay, a lot of these businesses, in order for them to switch over, they have point of sale systems or they have pay at the pump gas stations or they have multiple machines. So before you go spouting off at the mouth and saying, oh, I'm going to give you this for free and that for free, before you do that, stop. You've got to be realistic with them, okay? They have a point of sale system. Their point of sale software provider is going to have to switch them over, and it could cost them $300 per POS terminal to do that. Okay, it's a lot of money. And it's worth it because your, your bid is going to be a lot lower, and you're going to save them $1,000 a month, so it's worth it. But don't get yourself stuck into a box where you're going to do everything for free and you're going to do, no, don't do that. You've got to be realistic about the cost and the time. The best way to do that is don't give them a timetable or a cost structure until you've had a chance to fully analyze everything and talk to me about it. Call me up and say, hey, James, here's the deal. I got this business. They got 50 locations. Here's blah, 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 blah. What do I do about that? Uh, what's our timetable going to be? And I will give you specifics about the timetable and everything you need to know uh, to go back to them and to be realistic about the timetable and the cost structure. I'll even call the point of sale company for you or call the software company that did the pay at the pump and we'll get an estimate going so that you can go back to the merchant and give them realistic um, timetable and realistic cost. And now you're dealing with other vendors. Okay, You're going to have to work with these other vendors uh, to help the merchant out to get this process done. Okay, All right, next. Um, don't be afraid to make a big gesture, okay? Um, don't be afraid to make a big gesture. It's not uncommon for me to drive four hours one way um, to make a big gesture. If they say, man, you know what, actually, I know the owner wanted to speak with you, um, but for unfortunately, he's at a corporate office, he is four hours away, he's not going to be back in this area for a long time, uh, might be several months, but I know he wanted to talk to you. I said, well, you know what? I tell you, what's this uh, number? If, I, if I'm willing to drive there and meet him right now, do you think he'd be able to have some time for me? It might be 9 o'clock in the morning. I call him up and say, hey, uh, you know, I know I've, you've seen my estimate. I'd like to talk to you. I know I want to meet with you face to face. If I drive there right now, I'm about four hours away. Are you available? Man, that just goes a long way. Now, I know if you might not be able to afford to do that right now. Your business might not be to that point, and I understand that. I'm just saying, if you get a big deal like that, it's going to be worth your while. And when you make the big gesture, don't expect anything in return, okay? You might drive four hours and you get there. I've done this. I've Believe it or not, I've driven four hours to meet somebody, gotten there, and then the merchant says, the owner says, you know, man, James, I'm really swamped today. I'm so sorry. You know, I did want to meet with you. Oh, that's no problem at all. How about I come back on Thursday? Seriously, I've done that before. And I'm telling you, that's tough because you want to say, you moron, I just drove four hours. You can't do that, okay? Make a big gesture. Don't expect anything in return. Just make a big gesture. It's going to go a long way towards helping you 
a few months from now when you try to close the deal. Again, I'm trying to emphasize to you guys the timetable on these big deals is so much different and you have to accept that otherwise you're going to seem like the pushy salesman rather than the competent uh, experienced professional that you want to seem like on these big deals. Okay, lastly, work two days per month on big deals. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys how to do big deals where it doesn't mess up your schedule. Do not allow your big deals to invade your entire schedule. Don't do that. Okay, um, you got to go out there and make money. So you got to go out there and make these other little deals happen. So you got to keep that going. So here's what I recommend that you do. Again, most of these big deals, it's going to come down to how do I get into the bidding process, which is basically going to be, well, it's pretty easy. We accept bids on August 15th. Okay, so you just mark that in your schedule, August 15th. That's when they accept bids. Okay. You have your list of prospects and what you've done with each prospect. You make a big list of all 30. Keep notes on each one. What I personally, I'll tell you what I do. Um, I have a special folder where I actually print out. I have one page for each prospect, and I just write notes. Actually, you know, manually write notes. Can you imagine with a pen and paper? I still do that, and just write notes on that page about it. And then I put it back in my folder. And I try to work on that two days a month. So once every two weeks. I take out my big deals and all day long I just try to hammer through those big deals and I just call them up if, if they need to be called I call them if they wanted something done I call them or whatever and I just try to get everything done now that sometimes that will fade into my next day of work because sometimes they want me to do something and I wasn't able to get to it I got to do it the next day but in general I only, I only uh, try to do this two days a month is when I'm actively selling that's all I tried to do with the big deals is a couple days a month I would just work on that only and so schedule those two days a month. One of the things that you're going to have to learn in this business is if you want to build your business, you have to learn to schedule times when you're going to work on other things um, and you have to be able to let go of some of your concerns for a little while. You might be tight on funds, you might really need some money coming in and you might think, man, I don't even know how I'm going to pay the bills the next couple weeks. I don't have time to work on these big deals. Take your day, maybe it's only half a day you can do, that's fine. But take some time each month, schedule that time to work only on large deals on that prospect list that you made in the first step, and you just work that list. And again, don't expect anything. May expect to close one deal in the next year, that's fine. Low expectations, okay? But I'm telling you guys, one deal like that can get you $1,000 a month in residual very easily. Um, and not even a huge deal. I closed a deal a little while back, it was 11 locations. Uh, that's going to be around $800 a month in residual. And I mean, that, for some of you guys, that would change your business. I mean, that would you'd be able to quit your part-time job if you got that deal. So um, again, don't. it's not a full-time thing. You're not full-time working on big deals. You can't do that yet. You've got to make money. You've got to get that money coming in. But schedule one day or maybe a half a day every two weeks where you're, it's scheduled. You're not dealing with other things. The world will go on if you take a half a day and work on something, okay? So work on big deals, get some big deals. Number two, you got to create your list of prospects based on your personal experience, reference USA, Google Maps, find places that have multiple locations. Um, somewhere between 10 and 50 locations is usually your best bet. Up to 99. Once you start getting over 100 locations, usually we're looking at a corporate account. Those are going to be really, really toughy, uh, very difficult, real iffy. I wouldn't go after those yet, okay? So stick to like your, your five locations up to maybe 50 or even 90 locations. Once you get above that, not a good idea. Or they do over 100000 a month. So make a list of those businesses in your area. Uh, number three, when you pitch them, when you call, just ask, how do I get involved in your bidding process? Number four, talk to anybody that you get on the phone. Number five, do what they want you to do. Do what they ask you to do when they ask you to do it. Number six, be realistic about timetables and the cost that's going to be involved from third-party vendors to make the switchover happen. If you have questions about that, call me. I'll help you out with it. Number seven, make a big gesture. Don't be afraid to drive a long way to make a big gesture to help them out with something. And number eight, uh, work at least two days a month or even a half a day, twice a month. That's fine. But schedule separate time when all you're going to do is work on big deals. Guys, I think if you would follow the advice I just gave you right there, I'm telling you your business will explode. Not right now, but six months or a year from now. Because if you steadily work on this every other week for a whole year, I promise you you're going to see some results. And the results you're going to see are going to be huge results. It's going to be huge for your prestige in your market. It's going to be a great referral. How would you like to be able to tell an individual business owner, yeah, I do the credit card processing for so-and-so, and they know that that business owner's got 50 locations. 
What does that say about you as a salesperson? Man, that says this guy's legitimate. He's awesome. Man, this guy can definitely handle my customer concerns and my customer complaints, right? That's who we want to go after. So try to get some big accounts. Get me involved in the process. I would love to help you out with those. Hey, thanks so much for watching my video, guys. I hope you have a terrific day today.